Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to your professional development session on using uh, the Moodle course template. Uh, I'm glad you have decided to join me. And uh, the first thing I want to point out is that you do have a uh, PDF file uh, down below this video uh, for some, just kind of some guided notes to give you a way uh, to jot down some of your thoughts and insights as we go through uh, the Moodle course template. Uh, and, and kind of have a reference for you to go back to, uh, a quick reference for you to go back to rather than having to go back and, and rewatch this video and fast forward it to certain places. Uh, so do please uh, take advantage of uh, those notes and um, go ahead and download those and print those off if you haven't already. Uh, there's also a copy of the QM uh, higher ed standards that uh, you can print off if you uh, choose to do so. Uh, just please do not um, distribute that uh, to anybody outside of Northwest Shoals Community College. So um, let's go ahead and take a look, <clears throat> excuse me, go ahead and take a look at our objectives for the session. Uh, so we're going to first talk about why we should use a course template in the first place. Um, then we will take a few minutes and I'll have you look at one of your current courses and compare that uh, to the template just kind of at face value and um, just kind of jot down some some differences that you see between your current course and and the template and we'll just talk about in general what the format of the template is and try to get uh, a good visual in our head of kind of what the 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 differences are between uh, your your traditional kind of default course format versus the template format so that when we get into actually navigating and editing we have uh, an idea uh, a visual idea of our, in our head of, of what exactly it is that we're navigating then we'll look at the different ways that you can actually navigate the course there are five different ways to navigate so we'll quickly just kind of go through each one of those and then lastly, uh, that's where we'll spend most of our time with that la last objective. Uh, we're going to look at how to actually take the template and customize it to your personal style and preferences and uh, talk about a couple of different little tips and tricks that, um, that I've kind of picked up along the way and all the many versions of this uh, template that I've created over the course of the last year or so. Uh, so first and foremost, let's, uh, before we get into looking at all this, let's talk about why it's important in the first place to use a template. So if I'm a student at Northwest Shoals Community College and I am, uh, let's say I'm a full-time online student, which means I'm taking four courses online. I'm taking math, science, history, and English, let's say. And in each one of those four different courses, I have uh, a different course format that the instructor has chosen to use. So when I log into one course, I have to not only um, have my frame of mind of, okay, I'm, I'm learning, I'm doing math today and I'm in my math zone, uh, but I also have to remember, okay, well, this is the math course, which means that I need to go click here to find my assignment and then I have to do this with the assignment before I can turn it in and when I do turn it in, this is how I turn it in and where I turn it in and all of that. Then I go and log into my history course and I have to switch from math zone to history zone and I have to also kind of relearn where everything is. So if we can start to move towards a more standardized type template that kind of everybody that teaches online uh, starts with this same template and then uh, kind of customizes it from there, uh, it creates a, uh, a standardized kind of process that our students can can come to expect. So if I'm an on time, uh, on time, full time online student, then I can focus basically 100% of my time towards learning my content versus having to learn content and also uh, the Moodle platform. So we want to we want to create uh, an opportunity where our students are able to focus their efforts on the content and not on the technology. Um, also, these, uh, th this course template is based off of the Quality Matters standards that, uh, that I mentioned to you were, were in your uh, resources. The Quality Matters standards are not just 
a list of things that uh, a group of people got together in a room and decided on uh, over the course of you know a couple of weeks, a couple of months, uh, or even a couple of years. The, the first QM standards were released in 2012 and there's been uh, five revisions since then and the research that goes into these standards is substantial. They have a team of people that are working on these and they literally scour thousands of articles in the literature and then condense those thousands of articles down into um, you know maybe a few hundred and then they from there uh, they get these standards. So these standards are based in research and are updated uh, fairly regularly every few years and so that would be the the why are we you know why are we creating this template from those standards now the benefit uh, to, to those of you that are going through the QM process you have to meet all of those standards to get your QM core certified okay well just by using this template and or the suggestions and advice that are embedded within it you will meet 19 out of 42, there's 42 total standards, so you'll roughly 45% of the QM standards uh, you will meet just by using this template or the suggestions listed within it. So let's take a look at this, uh, at this rubric real quick, at these standards rather. So all of your first standards here from 1.1 to 1.9, all of those are met by using uh, this template. As we go down here, we've got, let's see, 2.3 is another one that's met using the template. 3.2 is another one that's met. 5.3 and 5.4, both of those. And all of seven, and the first two and eight here. So 7-1 should be included in that, and then 8-1 and 8-2. Uh, so roughly half of your standards are met uh, if you're going through the QM certification process, again, just by using this template. And if you'll notice over here on the right-hand side, each one of these standards has a different uh, point value associated with it. So these ones that are three-point standards are what are referred to as essential standards. And if you miss any one of those, you can get... 41 out of 42 of them, but if the one that you missed is an essential standard, uh, then you won't pass certification. Uh, and the template meets 8 out of the 23 of the essential standards. So you're 45% overall, and then 34% of your essential standards are met. So it's definitely uh, helpful for those of you that will be going through uh, the QM certification process. And so it also provides a better user interface and uh, user experience for our students. So the thing that makes us want to use technology is, is usually not the technology itself, right? So think about, um, the, the easiest way to think about it is iPhone versus Android or Windows versus Mac, okay? It, especially for those of you that have used both sides of the coin there. So if you've ever been an iPhone and an Android user, okay, well eventually you decided on one or the other. Well, they, the technology is the same. Both of those phones will do the same things for you, right? You can surf the web, you can send text messages, you can make phone calls, you can do um, video calls, you can do all these different things on both of these devices. The technology is the same. What makes you want to use one over the other is the user interface which affects the experience that you have using that technology. Okay, so what we're trying to do with this template is to take the technology which is Moodle and create a better user experience within it. Okay, so make it more intuitive to navigate and make it easier to navigate, easier to get from point A to point B and cut down on the possibility of uh, frustrations and, and barriers and things of that nature. So uh, I think that 
uh, the, the template does do a good job of, of giving us a better user interface and, and thus a, a better user experience for our students. And then lastly, there's no reason for you to try and reinvent the wheel when you're going to uh, redesign a course, right? And, and then again, especially for those going through the QM certification process, if, if you're completely redesigning your course curriculum and your course uh, format in Moodle, okay, that's a lot of work to, to uh, that's a huge bite to, to take, right? So you're, you're redesigning the curriculum and you're having to redo everything in Moodle, right? Well, if someone has already taken the time to build a template for you that meets all these standards, there's no reason for you to then go back and, and reinvent all of that, right? So there's, there's ways to take this template and say, okay, well, I don't like that. I'm going to throw that out. I'm going to throw that out and still kind of keep the same basic um, interface, right? So uh, it's really less work for you to, in the long run to use this template versus trying to start from scratch with a, with a new Moodle course shell uh, and, and go from ground zero and go from there. We are ready to get logged into Moodle and do our comparisons between the two courses. And I want to go through the process of logging in so I can show you a little tip here. So if you're like me, when you first log into Moodle, you have a gazillion courses here, right? Maybe not as many as me, but I'm sure you have a few. So to find your template, you can do Control F, and you see you've got this little search box here uh, that pulls up. And then I can type in the name of the course that I'm looking for, and it'll go right to it. And if that's not the one I want, you can see here I've got 20 courses that have the word template in it. So I can just click enter. And as I click enter, it goes through all of those instances of the word template. Okay, so go ahead and open up your template. Okay, and there's two things that, um, that I want you to do real quick before we get into um, doing this comparison between courses. The first thing I want you to do is find the administration block, which should be somewhere over here on the right hand side of your page. We're going to go into edit settings and just make sure that all of the settings that needed to import over did in fact import over. And what I found is that uh, there's just a couple of things that are quirky when we uh, import these templates. This one is one that's somewhat 50-50. Okay, so Within your edit settings, we're going to click on course format, look at course layout. It should say show one section per page. Okay, if it doesn't, you want to set it to that. Okay, so we want the course layout under course format to say show one section per page and then click on save and display. All right, the other thing I want you to do is I want you to look at this as a student. So again, in the administration block, at the very bottom, let's switch our role and let's look at this as a student. Okay, so we've got that set to student view. Now let's open up uh, one of your other courses to compare it to. So how we're going to do that is we're going to come up here to home and we're going to hover over home. Okay, don't left click on it right click on it and okay, so I, I want to go home but I want to leave this tab open too so I right click and I'm gonna say open that link but do it in a new tab All right so I still have my template but I can also pull up another course in this second tab here okay so in this tab uh, go ahead and find one of your courses that you're teaching right now, or maybe one that you taught last semester. Um, it doesn't really matter, just any one of your courses. Uh, find it, pull it up, and then I want you to spend a couple minutes just scrolling through it, and a couple of minutes scrolling through the course template, 
and just jot down some, some differences that you see or anything that sticks out to you from your course or anything that sticks out to you from the template course. Okay, so uh, take a few minutes and do that and then we will um, come back together and talk about what we see. Okay, so first I want to talk about visually what, what we see with the default course versus what we see with the course template. Okay, so what your course more than likely looks like at this point, and it may or may not, but for the most part from what I've seen in looking at uh, various different online courses is that you'll have them divided by topic. Some of you do have um, categories, some don't, uh, but by and large, most everybody will, will have something uh, that kind of says, all right, this is, this is the topic. And then I've got, you know, some, some word files, some video files, some different things, right? Just kind of listed. And then I scroll down some more. I have another topic start. Maybe this is, you know, a uh, test topic for, uh, or maybe this, this heading is for the test for that topic or maybe it's a completely new topic. But either way, we keep scrolling, we have uh, some, some headings, and then things listed under those headings. Uh, Word files, PowerPoint files, uh, URL links, quizzes, all that kind of good stuff. And there's nothing wrong with this. And a lot of you have some very well-organized and well-designed courses doing it just like this, right? So the the biggest issue with that is that it's just this one big long scrolling page, right? So by the time I get to the end of the semester and we're on topic 11, right? Every time I log in, I have to scroll, 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 scroll till I get all the way down to topic number 11. And it's not a huge deal, but it's something, again, going back to that user experience that we want to create a better user interface to give our students a better user experience okay and it's not too terribly difficult to do that so looking on the right hand side right so what we're going to have with the template is again we're going to have these topics we're going to call them modules what you're going to see on your what we're going to refer to as home page is the name of the topic right then you've got an overview learning objectives and that's all you see on your home page right so I can scroll probably not very much and get kind of a snapshot of the entire course you can see what the topics are right the names for each one of the modules an overview for that module and the learning objectives for that module all on the home page on one location right and then when I click on topic one all of this stuff will be inside of there, right? So I get taken to another page and that's where all my resources are. Okay, so I'm just kind of taking all of this and sticking it inside of this link, right? So that, in general, that's the biggest difference between the, the way that the course template is laid out and how you need to kind of visualize it in your head versus what you're used to with the one big long scrolling page, right? So on our home page, we're going to have little snippets of each module. And then when you click on the name of the module, that's when you go and get all your resources within it. Okay. So now let's take a look at some of the other things that were different other than just the way that uh, the general format. Uh, so you have student support resources, right? A whole module full of uh, tips for netiquette, your technical requirements, the distance ed student handbook, uh, tips for online learning, uh, information about the support services that are offered both on campus and online, and links to all of that. Uh, you've got your ADA stuff here, and then other policy information as well. Okay, so again, that's all stuff that's more directed towards the QM standards. Um, but especially here, 
I'd, I'd say the vast majority of your students are not going to pay too terribly much attention to the ADA information and the policy information. Uh, but these first two is good information for them to have, right? Um, so we've got all of that, and let's just take a look at what this looks like. Okay, so we go in to uh, this first link here, and all of these are just PDFs, right? So tips for online learning, and then you just scroll through your PDF file here. So just some good information for them, uh, for online students to have. Uh, you've got, we talked about the, the modular format, the overviews and the objectives. Uh, the other big thing would be the navigation pane up here, right? The, uh, the navigation pane makes it much easier to get from one point to the other. Uh, especially once we get into a module because this navigation pane never goes away no matter where I go right if I scroll through and let's say we're in module 4 so I'm inside of module 4 here my navigation pane is still up here right so at any point I can get anywhere in the course that I want to go and we'll talk more about some different ways to navigate here in just a minute um, then with e within each one of these modules, you'll see we've got uh, some icons with some different categories set up uh, to, to let the students know, okay, here's where my PowerPoints are going to be, here's where my quizzes are going to be, and every one of them is laid out with the same icons in the same order. Okay, now again, this is a template, so if we don't want to use these, we don't have to, uh, and we'll get into more about how to actually get rid of those or change those if we want to here in just a minute. All right, so to talk about navigation, uh, let's go and look at a finished course that was created with the template. Okay, so I'm in the student view right now of the online educator development course, which is a training course for all online faculty uh, here at Northwest Shoals. Uh, I think we have 27, 28 people going through it right now. Um, and again, this was created from the template. So you see we've got our na navigation pane here and I'll just kind of scroll through and give you an idea of what a finished product looks like. All right. Okay, so the different ways that we can navigate the course template. First and foremost, the navigation pane. This is the home page, right? Where we are now, that's our home page. So no matter where we go, okay, so now I'm in module two. If I want to get back to the home page, I can always get back there by just clicking here. Or I can go anywhere else I want to go in this course. At all times, this navigation pane, no matter where I go, the navigation pane will be right there. Uh, once you're inside of a module, you can progress backwards one module or forwards one module by clicking on your arrows here. So that is uh, the second way for you to navigate. Once we get into once we've clicked a few links here, you'll notice you've got these little things up here. These are called breadcrumbs. Okay, so if I want to go back, this is where I'm at, right? The impact of student development theory. See that title right there. Okay, so the to the to the right, your rightmost breadcrumb, that's where you're at right now. We can either go back one to the um, to module two's homepage or we can go back to the actual home page for the course from here. Okay, so you've got navigation pane, you've got your forward and back arrows, and you've got the breadcrumbs. Uh, also, again, now that we're back to the home page, right, I can, I can scroll through the home page here and go to any one of these modules that I want from the home page. Okay, so that's another way. And then lastly, you've got your navigation pane, 
which I have docked over here on the left-hand side of the screen. Right, and we'll, we'll talk about that here in just a sec. So this navigation pane allows you to either click on the actual module itself and navigate to it, or you can click on this folder and navigate to the resources within that module. Okay, so let's click on one that has a few more resources. There we go. So I open up this folder here for module two, and let's say I want to look at or I want to go to this discussion, right? So I'm on the home page now, and I'm gonna jump straight to the discussion for module two. Okay, I can click here and start my discussion. Okay, from here, use my breadcrumbs, go back to the home page. Okay, so in your welcome video to your course or in your orientation video for your course, um, whether you do two separate or, or kind of combine those, I would briefly walk through with your students, you know, the different ways to navigate the course. Uh, you can, you know, you can choose to uh, delete the navigation pane here if, if you'd rather just do away with that altogether. Um, but I would definitely take a, a, a minute or two in my orientation video and kind of show them the different ways to move around the course. Make sure I got everything there. All right. So now, let's talk about editing the template, what everyone is probably most interested in, how to customize it. Okay, so I'm in student view in both of these. No, I'm not. Let me go back to student view. All right, I'm in student view in both of these courses. Okay, so here's the template. Here's the course created with the template. So there's a, a slight difference here. And the difference is right over here. And again, this is kind of a personal preference thing, but I really like the, the course here, the, the way I have it laid out. I get the whole, the whole screen for my course content, right? Versus over here, I've only got, you know, roughly three quarters of the screen. Even worse, if you've got, well, I guess it's not gonna let me do it, but I, I'm, I'm fairly certain by default, you've got one column of blocks here and then a second column of blocks here, which then leaves you only a little bit more than half of the screen for your course content. So the first thing I would do um, for, for my template is to take all of the blocks that are over here and click on this little arrow and send them over to the left hand side, right? They're still there and they're still fairly easy to access. Uh, it just frees up your, your, your space here on the screen to where you have the entire screen for your course content and it's not scrunched in. Okay. To me, that makes a huge difference. Um, I'm sort of OCD, so some, uh, so maybe that's just kind of a personal thing for me. All right. So let's get into edit mode. I'm in student view, right? And I do recommend that you go to student view fairly often just to kind of check and make sure that things are looking the way that you are envisioning that they're going to look in your head, right? So make a few changes, do a few things, switch over to student view and see what it looks like, and then switch back. Okay, so to get out of student view, I'm gonna hover over my administration block, I'm gonna return to my normal role, and then let's turn editing on, and let's start looking at how we can edit. Okay, so, as we go through here, again, we're on the home page right now. And in edit mode, you get what's actually going to show on the home page to your students, which is just this part right here. Okay, so from here to there, 
that's what's going to show up on the home page to the students. If I was to go back to student view right now and click on home, all they would see on their home page is this little bit right here. Okay, but in edit mode, you get what shows up on the home page and then everything that's actually inside of that module, right? So the resources inside that module, once you click on the module name, come directly underneath it. Okay, so it's, you know, the more you work with it, the, the easier it will be for you to kind of in your head just know, okay, that's what's showing up on the home page, and then this is what's inside the module. But the way you can know for sure what's showing on the home page versus what's showing inside the module. Hey, if I go here and click on edit, right, here's my module name. If I go to edit and it says edit topic, the topic is what shows up on the home page. Okay, so I can go in, click on edit topic here, and I can change all of this stuff. Right, so let's just see what that looks like. Okay, again, down to right here below my picture, that's what shows up on the home page. I can change any of that by clicking on edit topic. Going back, okay, once I see another edit button, what that tells me is, okay, this is inside the module. Okay, so my, my topic starts here. I go in, I insert information, and then once I start putting things underneath it, those are the things that are going to go inside the module itself. Okay, so when I click on edit here, it's going to say edit settings because this is not a topic. This is a resource within the topic. Okay, so this is what they will actually see once they click on start here. Everything that is underneath uh, this, right? So keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. All right, there's the end of my first topic or module. Now here's my second one. Right, if I click here, I get my edit topic. So I know, all right, that's a very short little um, piece of screen there, right? So the only thing on the home page for this topic is just what you see here in red, right? You got this little image, you've got this little one paragraph in red font, and that's it. That's all that's on the home page. Now when I click edit here, I get edit settings because this is a resource inside of the topic, okay? So that's something that you need to be aware of as far as when you click on anything that says edit topic, you're editing what the students see on the home page. And when you click on the resources inside there, that's when you're starting to, to either add resources or edit the resources that are already there. What I like to do, because it's easier and there's less scrolling, is if I know that I'm going to be doing stuff in the Start Here module, for instance, I'll click on the Start Here module. That way I only get the Start Here module, right? I don't get all the other stuff. It just less stuff on the screen, less stuff to look at, less of an opportunity for your, kind of your eyes to, to play tricks on you. So now that we're in the Start Here module, Let's do some things. Okay, so I'm going to, let's edit this picture here. Okay, let's, um, let's talk about how we would customize the Start Here module. Okay, so it says click on Edit, Edit Topic. So we'll do that. And then double click on the image. I'm not on my computer. So let's see if there's any images I can find here. So once you double click on, on this image, you'll go to Browse and then Choose File and then you can search your computer for an image of yourself to replace it with. Let's see if there's any pictures here. Alright, let's make this a koala bear. Okay, so we're going to upload that. Okay, so you see 
all I can see here is just the little ear. So that means we need to change these dimensions, right? What we should probably do, let's X out of this real quick. What we should probably do is keep the dimensions the same as what they already are, right? So 350 by 300. Let's go back and find that koala picture again. And then we'll change our dimensions to 350 by 300. And it's changing it ah, because the auto size is on. So we'll take the auto size off 350 by 300. Hey, and you can play around with the with the dimensions there. You know, if you want to make it bigger, smaller, whatever, you can just change the dimensions and go from there. Okay, so then you would enter your information here, add to it or or do less, whichever you want to do. Hey, and that's all that uh, that's all that we really have to do for this particular chunk, right? Because that's all that's there. So we've changed our image. So now you've got some, uh, some suggestions here and some kind of step-by-step -step advice about how to uh, record your orientation video. So all of this stuff, you know, leave it up for as long as you need it but then when I actually get ready to post my video, I'll just come in here and I'll highlight all of this stuff and I'll just delete it. All right, so we'll say, welcome to sample course. All right, so now I have this welcome message here. and all that placeholder material is gone. Okay, so now let's look at how to actually put your orientation or a welcome video into the module. Okay, so instead of editing what's already there, let's go down to the very bottom and we'll click on add an activity or resource. Okay, so what I want to add is, actually, you know what, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's back up. More than likely, your, um, your welcome video or your orientation video will be recorded in Panopto. So we'll need to go into Panopto and retrieve some information there. Okay, so let's go. We go into Panopto, we find our video, right? So I'm just going to pick one at random here. Hey, if I hover over these, you see when I hover over I get all these different options here. Hey, so we'll hover over our welcome video and we'll click on share. And there's two ways to do this and we're going to look at both of them. The first way is to use a link. So I'm going to copy the link for this video and then go back and now add an activity or a resource. And I'm going to use a label because labels are awesome and they are by far the most versatile, flexible, and beneficial tool that you have in Moodle because you can do essentially anything that you want to do with a label. Uh, the template is probably made up of 90 to 95 percent labels. Um, so we'll, we'll see how we can do a few different things with them. So we're going to add a label here. And I'm just going to put welcome video. Okay. Now what you could do, well, we'll get to that in just a sec. So we're going to highlight the text here, welcome video. And we're going to paste that link here. Anytime that you link, um, insert a hyperlink, you always want to make sure you click on this open in a new window and, and we'll look at why here in just a second. So we're going to go ahead and click on open in a new window and there is my link. Okay, so we could also, if 
we wanted to, instead of just it saying welcome video, you can say, you know, please view the welcome video before moving on to anything else. Or just some sort of message, you know, that lets them know, hey, I want you to watch this welcome video. Okay, so we're going to take all of that and we're going to make it a little bit bigger, right? So here's my different, uh, some of my different options to change how my font looks. Make that small, save and return. Always click on save and return. Okay, now I've got my label down here at the bottom. Anytime you add a, an activity or a resource, it's always going to by default, go to the bottom of that module, right? So I'm going to click on these arrows over here and drag it where I want it to go, which is right underneath where this says welcome to my course. And I don't really like the way this lines up, so I'm going to indent this a little bit to the right. Okay, so let's come over here and click on edit, move to the right. I like that a little bit better. Okay. Hello. I'm just recording a little PD session here. Uh, so the reason that you want to open everything in a new window, okay, let's just click on this link here. Okay, see how my template is still open there. And then I've got my video that opens in a new window. Okay, if we don't do it that way, when I click on this link, this is going to be replaced, and then when I X out of my video, I'm Xing out of Moodle altogether, which uh, is frustrating. So that is one way to enter your uh, welcome video. Now let's look at a second way that we can do this. So again, go down to the bottom, add an activity or a resource, and we're going to do a label again because labels are awesome, and we can do lots of things with them. Okay, so back to our um, video in Panopto. We're going to switch from link to embed. Okay, so click here and copy your embed code and then come back into Moodle. So the embed code is different. I can't just do like I did last time and say welcome video, highlight it, insert uh, a hyperlink. A embed code is completely different than a hyperlink. So we have to click here on this show more and then click here on your HTML icon. Okay, so there, then there, then we can paste our embed code. And I know that looks funky, but that's not how it's going to show up on your Moodle page. So no worries. So we'll save and return. Scroll all the way to the bottom because that's where it's going to be. Okay, and then we pull it up to where we want it, which would be right underneath this welcome. Okay, so now going back to student view, you see your two options here. I can either embed the video to where the students can play it straight from the page here, or I can have it embedded in some text. Okay, where I click on it, takes me to a second page. All right, let's see, insert welcome video. All right, let's go back to our normal role. And anytime you go back and forth between student view and normal role, you always have to turn editing back on. All right, so moving forward with customizing this Start Here module. And we'll go into this label, right, where it says our resources. Um, it gives you a list of some things that you can uh, put in your Start Here module. So let's put some of those things in here. So I'm going to edit the setting for this resources label. Again, this is a label because labels are awesome. I'm going to delete everything except for the word resources. I'm going to just let this be a heading. 
Okay, so delete all of that kind of placeholder text there okay, to where it just says resources. And let's go and add. Okay, now this time we're going to look at the difference between adding a Word file and adding a PDF file. Either way, they're both files. So we'll go this time to add a file. Okay, so what that's going to take you to is a place that looks like this where you've got to give it a name. We'll just call it syllabus. And then you can click here and browse your computer or if you already have your folder open that has your stuff in it, you can drag and drop it over here. All right, so this is going to, we'll do this one as a Word file. I'm just going to take this and drag and drop it over. All right, for Word files, the best appearance to set is to open in a pop-up. Okay, so anytime you add a Word file, click on your appearance here and change it to open in a pop-up. And I'll show you why here in just a second. Okay, so we're going to take this and drag it right underneath our resources and let's move it to the right. Okay, so when I click on this, because I set it to open in a pop-up, this guy comes up and I can click here to open my Word file. If I had not done it this way, then this guy right here would have pulled up down at the bottom of the screen. Sometimes people don't notice that and they'll continue to click on the link thinking that the link is broken. Okay, So if I set it to open in a pop-up, then it's up here right in front of their face. There's really uh, no way, well, I wouldn't say no way, but less of a chance that they'll miss it. Okay, so that's adding a Word file. Let's look at adding a PDF, which in my opinion is the better way to go. Okay, so we'll go back to add a file. Again, we'll call this syllabus. And again, I will drag and drop my PDF over. Okay, for PDFs, we're going to do new window. And this is the same concept as the link uh, that I talked about earlier when we linked the video here. Right? When I set this to open in a new window, when I click on it, I get a new tab and there's my document. Right? So I don't have to download anything or open Word. It just immediately pulls up in a new tab. When I'm done reading my document, I can close it and I'm right back in my course versus, well, let's just see what it looks like when we do it the other way. So you can see exactly what I'm talking about. We'll just set it to automatic, which is the default. Okay, so watch your tab right here when I click on this. Click on syllabus. Okay, so my Moodle course just became my syllabus tab. So if I was to close this tab out right now, I'm going to be completely closed out of Moodle. Now I've got to go back to nwsec.com, click on Moodle, log in, do that, all that. So it's fairly frustrating. I can click back though, and I'll be good. Okay, let's look at inserting one more thing. This time, let's say we're going to do just a random uh, URL. Let's say you found, well, let's just, let's just go to YouTube. All right, I'm going to share this Spider-Man video students for some reason. All right, so I'm going to steal this URL, copy it, then go back to my course. And this could work for any URL. It doesn't have to be a video. It could be a site that, um, you know, like a blog or anything. 
Uh, so let's look at this URL tool. Okay, so again, we have to give it a name. We'll call it Spider-Man Link. Then we enter our URL here. Okay, so for our appearance, you notice we don't have new window, right? That's not an option for the URL. So the best option here is to open it in a pop-up window. Uh, by default, these are your dimensions of the pop-up window, which makes it about the same size as that uh, pop-up that came up with the Word document in it. I usually try to make this a little bit bigger. We'll go from 620, let's say 1020 by 850. Save and return, and let's see. We'll see what our pop up looks like. Hey, okay, so a little bit bigger. You can use your tax refund to get a car, and I should know. This is a commercial. Don't necessarily about need to change cars, that, but you can play with those dimensions if It'll you'd save like you to. Money on your down payment, like a thousand. Right, and then all of these. Right, the Word document, the PDF, the URL, all of these you could use a label for and do the exact same thing that we did right here. Right, so I could add a label and then just type the word syllabus in that label and highlight the words, enter a hyperlink. Instead of hyperlinking to a video, I can hyperlink to a Word document, a PDF document, or any kind of URL. So, again, labels are awesome. You can use them for everything. Here's something else we can use them for. Uh, see how all my stuff here is all kind of jumbled together, right? So, what we can do to create some white space between different headings is to insert a label with nothing in it. Okay, so here's my label. You can find it by just looking at the very bottom and looking at, for the arrows here. So I'm going to put an empty label between this and this, and then I'm going to duplicate that, give myself another one to separate your video from your resources, and it just looks a little cleaner. Uh, makes it easier for my eyes to kind of follow what's on the screen and differentiate one thing from the next. Uh, and I would, uh, if you're going to use this, I would, you know, continue doing the duplicate instead of adding a new label every time. All right, so just a way to kind of create some, um, some definition between your headings. All right, now let's go into our next module and look at a few things there. Okay, so if you're going to use the, um, the quiz function in Moodle, the first thing you're going to have to do is go in here, add an activity or resource, then you go down here to quiz, you would click on quiz, name your quiz, and when you do that, you will have created a link like this one. But all it does is create a link to a quiz. You don't have any questions inside the quiz, you just have a link to the quiz tool. Okay, and then when you click on it for the first time, what you're gonna see is preview quiz now here in the middle of the page. And then you'll click on that and there'll be nothing in there and you'll go back and forth and, and get confused, right? So the administration block over here may or may not actually already be there. It is for this one. If you don't have an administration block over here, you have this that says add a block, okay? So since my administration block is already here, obviously it's not in this list, but you will have to add the administration block to be able to do anything. And so when we actually get ready to go in and um, add questions to a quiz, this is where we need to go here. 
Okay, so then we've got add questions. Um, I won't get into actually how to, to edit a quiz. Um, I'll include a link underneath the video here in, uh, in the Moodle course to a separate tutorial that has some more information about um, how to actually create a quiz. All right, let's go back to module zero. All right, one thing that a lot of people like to do is to set restrictions for different activities. So for example, you see here, I've got my getting started quiz and an introduction form. So if you would like to set it to where I can't post to this introduction form until I've completed the quiz, let's look at how we would do that. And so the first thing that I have to do is go into my quiz settings and I have to set what it means to complete the quiz, right? What are the criteria that have to be met for the quiz to be completed? Okay, so we can either not indicate any kind of completion criteria. We can set it so that the students can just check over on the side of the screen that they've done it, or we can set some conditions, okay? Uh, we want the students to have to receive a grade, more specifically, a passing grade for this particular uh, resource to be considered complete. Okay, so first we set the criteria for completion on the quiz, then, let's see, it's not taking me back, so that means something's, this quiz does not have a grade. Ah, gotcha. So within my edit quiz, I would have to set a passing grade there. But we would need to, to have that checked. Okay, so let's go back. All right, now we go to the introduction form, edit our settings on it. Okay, instead of doing activity completion, Okay, we don't want to set criteria for the discussion forum to be completed. We want to restrict the access to the discussion forum. Okay, so we click here, add restriction, and then we want to restrict it by uh, activity completion. Right? You can do all these other things as well. We're going to look at this though. All right, so students must. complete the getting started quiz and it must be complete with a passing grade. Right? That's what we want uh, to happen before they're able to even access uh, the introduction forum. Right? So once we save and return, right now if I went back to student view, Right, this introductions form is no longer a link. Right, I can't I can't click on that because I haven't finished this quiz yet. Okay, as soon as I take this quiz and pass it with a uh, whatever grade you said is passing, and then this link will open up. I can click on that and get into my discussion form. All right, let's go back to our normal role. Turn our editing back on. Uh, the last thing I was going to mention here is just to make sure you take a look at the uh, tips and the rubrics here about discussion boards. There's some good information in both of those links um, and it's uh, very helpful for the students to have some explicit direction uh, about their discussions going into them rather than just the you know, traditional, I need you to post once and, and reply twice and that's it. Um, with rubrics comes, you know, better discussions and, and better posts. So do take a look at those uh, resources there if you have a chance. Let's go to our next module. Okay. Actually, let's go back to student view real quick and let's look at 
modules one and two. Okay, so here's your first module. Got your overview, you've got your objectives, and then as we scroll down here, you've got your headings for instructional materials, learning activities, all this different stuff, right? So this is how the first module is laid out, and then um, each module has these headings with these icons. Uh, I've added some just placeholder type things here to give you an idea of what it could look like. And so that's one way for you to, to kind of organize your course resources. And the second module, again, I've got my overview and objectives because that's what shows up on the home page. But then when you actually get into the module, it looks quite different, right? I've got instructions here that says, you know, one, two, three, four, five, what exactly it is that the student needs to do. And then as we scroll down, I have numbers that correspond to the instructions, right? So number one, complete uh, the KWL Padlet. So number one here, I've got the KWL Padlet and all the resources that go along with it. Number two in my instructions are to view all the instructional videos. So as I scroll down, I find my number two, and then there's all the resources that go along with uh, the, that step in the instructions for this module. So it's just a different way that you're able to organize your resources. Uh, and again, that's just going to be a personal preference, kind of what you prefer to do. And if you'll notice, the vast majority of what I have here is just a bunch of labels because labels are awesome. All right, so let's look at uh, how to go into each of these modules and kind of customize them so they can be how you want them to be. All right, so in the first module, let's go in and let me open up this Word file really quick. What I would suggest for your overviews and objectives and things of that nature would be to um, have them typed out in a Word document so that you can copy and paste them in, uh, from Word into Moodle. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean by that right now. So we're going to edit what shows up on the home page, right? Here's my, um, here's my topic name, click on edit, it says edit topic, so I know I'm editing what shows up on the home page. Okay, so I'm going to take all of this placeholder stuff out. Just highlight all of this and delete it. And I'm going to delete all of that as well. Oh, and then there's some more stuff delete. All right, go into my Word document here and I'm going to pull over give me just a second. There we go. So I'm going to copy this and paste it. If I can get where, I, there we go. Paste it right there. Take my learning objectives, copy them. And paste. All right, so if you'll notice, I've got one type of font here and another type of font there. And that, unfortunately, is something that happens quite often with Moodle. It's one of the fun ways that we get to fight with it from time to time. Um, so I'm going to highlight my learning objectives and change their font to small. And then I'm going to highlight this and set it to small also so that they look the same. Okay, so now this is what will show up on your home page. Right. And then as we move down here, we'll delete some more of these placeholders. So if, you, if the information is 
all just advice and suggestions and there's nothing that you want to keep instead of going into um, the actual resource and editing it you can just delete the whole thing here okay, so we're going to delete that whole label right so I've got a couple of links here that I have used labels to um, to put those in I've got a URL, a PDF file, discussion, quiz, uh, assignment for the module, and then the module complete. All right, so that is editing your overview and your objectives. Let's say that you don't particularly care for uh, the headings here, or maybe you don't like these icons that are out beside. If you would like to change the icons, you can just get in touch with me, let me know what you want, and I will get those made up for you. If you just don't like them, uh, then we can go in here and click, and it's gone. Okay, so if you just want the headings by themselves, then you can just delete the icons as you go and leave these as just headings. Uh, if you want to change the icons, like I said, just let me know what you want it to look like uh, and I can get that made up for you pretty quick. Uh, you can obviously also change the names of the headings also, right? If you don't like instructional materials, you can, you know, call it uh, lecture videos or whatever you might need it to be called. Okay, so it's just a matter of editing uh, each one of these with the icons in it is just a label, right? So it's just a matter of going into the label and, and editing the settings and making it look however you want it to look. All right, let's look at a few things in Module 2. Actually, the only thing I was going to look at here, um, we've already looked at the difference between Modules 1 and 2, so if you do like the icons and the headings that are with all of the modules except module two, then here's what you'll need to do. Um, you'll need to go to the home page first of all because we need to be able to uh, duplicate something and drag it to another module, right? So module two does not have all of these icons and these headings. All the other ones do. Uh, but I wanted to show you in this module a different way to go about doing things. So if you want these, if you don't like the way that Module 2 looks now, and you'd rather have it uh, match all of the other ones, then we'll simply duplicate each one of these, and then take it and drag it down. Okay, so drag it down into Module 2, wherever you need it to go and then you would delete all of the stuff that's already here, right? So you would duplicate each one of these labels and then drag it into the second module. All right, I got just a couple more things to look at here and then I think we'll be done. Um, let's go, again, go back to home. Well, actually we can just go to it from here. So if you'll notice this module eight has this OEDC out beside it in parentheses. Okay, so the uh, online educator development course, that was one that we looked at earlier. This has to do with that. There's a Moodle project in that course, and as part of that, um, they have to request access for a course template and do some things within the course template, specifically within this one module. Okay, so this is just a place for uh, the uh, participants in that course to complete one of their projects. So if you have, uh, if you need this many modules, I know uh, a lot of people cut off around five or six, but if you have uh, the need for another module, uh, then we would need to edit all of this, right? So we'll edit our topic. You can change the name from this to you know, module eight, and then we'll switch it to match all the others that they look right right now. Uh, then we would just need to come in here and you know delete all of this, change the font from 
from the colors that it is back to black uh, and all of that good stuff. If you don't need it, uh, then we can just delete the entire section. So let's go back to home. And we'll go all the way down to module eight here. Okay, so we can delete the entire topic and it will all go away. Okay, so if you don't need that one or if you don't need you know anything past three or four then that's how you delete an entire topic. If you wanted to take one of your uh, modules and move it so let's say you want the the student support resources module to be up towards the top of the page then you can just click on these arrows here and then I want it to be um, underneath my module zero click there and now my student support resources should be up here <clears throat> which it is not not sure where it went let's see yeah there it is just wasn't showing up in our uh, instructor view for some reason so I moved it underneath module zero there all right I think that about wraps it up um, if you have questions concerns comments email call come by my office if not then happy editing in your Moodle page <laughs>